How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and I am currently in Las Vegas right now with Mammy. It's our five year anniversary so we decided to go out there for the weekend, have some fun, hang out, maybe do some car stuff, probably not. But I brought my camera gear just in case so we'll see if there is a video out of that. Anyways, today we are going to be taking a look at some tuner cars that you guys sent me. Uh, you guys sent me some golden eggs this round. The, I mean, uh, some absolute crazy swaps. Like, insane. Anyways, if you didn't see yesterday's video, I took my uh, GMC Canyon AT4 off-roading. Sent, sent her as hard as I could uh, under the circumstances. She did pretty good for a stock truck. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Had some fun out there. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right in. First car is a 1988 GMC Jimmy. You know, it's insane when you're watching like Major League Sports nowadays and you hear, oh, this player was born in 2004. And I think to myself, holy shit, I am getting old. I was born in 97 and I just am like, wow, I'm a loser. That's that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I bet the thought of a 1988 GMC Jimmy to a lot of you youngins is like, wow, that car is ancient. That's a classic. It's not a classic. I'm, I'm sad to say this is no classic, but still, let's see what he did to it. He wants $26,500, and obviously in the first photo, we have what looks like a turbo, twin turbo LS. That's just my guess so far. Um, I do see two turbos. One of them is kind of hidden from the intake piping, but still... Twin turbo LS. We have some giant slicks. I'm guessing it's tubbed in the rear. I mean, how else are you going to make those giant ass slicks fit on a GMC Jimmy? It's funny that there was a car just named Jimmy. Like, that's that's just, in my opinion, hilarious. Anyways, it looks like he has multiple different uh, maps. His highest map makes 958, and his lowest map makes 611. So, yeah. Good luck, buddy. Oh, and it's fully gutted. It weighs absolutely nothing. I mean, this thing is a tin can with a thousand horsepower, pretty much. These old Jimmys um, are not as popular as like the S10s. So a lot of people do the S10 and do the similar setups, just a turbo uh, LS. The Jimmy, however, I think uh, is is more of a sleeper. I mean, look at this thing. Besides the giant slicks, I would think, oh, it's just, um, you know, some old ass geezer driving around his his first car. I would not expect twin turb skis underneath the hood and a thousand horsepower that is a, that is a mean sleeper right there however i do got to dock him a few points because he ain't got no goddamn filters on those turbos put some filters on even if it's a track car at least put a, a turbo guard on that thing dude you're gonna be sucking up shit i mean look at your tires are right there you're, you you don't think you're flinging rocks into this right there there's there's not even any wheel liner you're definitely flinging rocks in that thing done deal r.i.p the gmc jimmy anyways it's a 88 jimmy fully caged and tubbed Front clip cut done, uh, tubing along the rear. Four link with Viking shocks. Shortened nine inch rear end. The motor is a 408 Cali forged LS block gen four. Uh, 821 LS heads. I want to see the turbos. Twin 66 millimeters Borg Warner turbos. Awesome. Made 960 on 21 pounds of boost. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. If it is one thing about LSs is they are a small package. They are a mighty fine small package. So you got a lot of real estate to work with uh, the turbos or whatever the hell you else want to put on it. For $26,000? I mean, it don't sound half bad. I wonder if it's like a street car though. Like, can you street car this thing? Probably not. Uh, it doesn't look very street car friendly. But who knows? Maybe he's got an ice tank in there that you can dunk your balls into on hot summer days. Who knows? Anyways, uh, moving on to the next car. We have a 1998 Lexus SC300 Sport Coupe two-door for $20,000. A little bit less. He's got a little video. Let's see. Let's see what this gets you. Sounds nice. Sounds real nice. Okay, he's honest about his damage. I appreciate that. Got a little bit of a scuff on the rear passenger quarter panel. We have race star slicks and skinnies. A little bit of damage up front. Oh, a lot of damage. Up front bumper needs a respray. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. This also, in my opinion, is one hell of a sleeper. Again, I mean, yeah, there's no way around getting around. There's no way of really getting around having meat. You know, you got to have meat if you have power. If you don't have power, then you don't need meat. It's just that simple. So, I mean, I know you, uh, to us, we see giant balloon slicks like that, and we're like, oh, that car's going to be fast, right? Like, that's typically what we think nowadays. Sadly, the way the modern-day ricers are with throwing slicks on stock cars it's kind of warped that sensation a little bit but to normal traffic they're just going to think it's an old car with chrome wheels you know to npcs that's all they're going to see 
but to us we see everything and he do be having a filter that's nice he has t-bolt clamps on his intake tube which is probably not needed but they look cool nevertheless stock looking interior stock-ish looking exterior giant 2jz gte non-vvti underneath the hood single turbo stock intake manifold um yeah the seats in the interior are really clean i mean that's expected it's a 98 after all that's a really clean interior. The only SC300 I've really seen is Alex's, and his interior is, is more beat than a hooker that has an abuse fetish. This interior is really clean. Like, this is an interior. This is, this is an interior you would take home to see, to see mom and dad. He's got Mickey Thompson ET Street SS's. Honestly, it's a really good tire. That's what I have on the Supra. RIP Supra. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Oh. But, uh, yeah, it's a good tire. I mean, I know he's he's got it on a on a maybe a 15, but... Still a good, a good gripping tire. Okay, maybe not for 480 wheel horsepower. I don't. You definitely didn't need all that. I don't have a 15 inch on the Supra, and I have that same tire, and I make 900 uh, before it got destroyed. Uh, yeah. So, mm, I don't know about all that. It is a very clean swap, and it is a very reliable swap at that power level, but. Yeah, it's a, okay. Like, you, do you really need slicks and skinnies? This is this is kind of what I was saying a minute ago. I mean, people put slicks and skinnies on stockish cars with stockish power. Now they're not making no 460 wheel for the most part, but I mean, it, it, a little bit overkill there. A little bit overkill. You could have done with a 17 or a uh, honestly an 18. I have 18s on the Supra, that same tire, and it hooks and books like crazy. So. Yeah. Anyways, um, he's a motivated seller, but doesn't mean he will give it away. He's on AEM and fin uh, AEM V2. My bad. Head was done by. So he wait. He has head work done, and he's only making 460, 480. I mean, I guess he has an R154 trans too. Why? Oh, 750 injectors. That's probably honestly what's holding him back. Yeah, dude. He has like this build is pretty nice. Like this is a pretty high power build. He has uh 269 cams. That's a nice cam. It's a big cam. He has an R154, that'll handle plenty of power, that'll handle 600 all day. Borg Warner Turbo, that's a solid turbo, this ain't no cheap Chinesium Turbo. He has dual AEM fuel pumps, E85 compatible, you definitely didn't need that for 400 horsepower. He has a super rear end, a GTE engine, the only thing that's holding him back I think is his injectors. You throw 1200s in this thing, you throw 2200s and you're making hella power. So, for 20 grand, I mean, that, that is pretty cheap. This is a solid foundation. Next car, we have a 2002 BMW 3 Series 325Ci Coupe for $27,000. Let's see his video. Okay, interior looks stock. Looks looks like a it looks like a 2002. Looks like it's got some healthy mileage on it. All right, we got little wide body flares. We have uh, kind of apex style wheels. They might be apex wheels, honestly, with just a BMW center cap. He has an LSX 427 license plate, so that gives you a good old hint of uh, what's powering this bad boy. You know what the best way to make your BMW more reliable is? Yeah, it's throwing LS in it, and that's exactly what this bad boy did right here. So he did kind of an M3 style body kit on it to a certain extent, and then he had to make up for the lack of rear fender flares by adding some. Um, the fronts, he was able to replace it looks like. You got great fitment. He has a nice wheel and tire setup. He's not on no rubber bands. The interior looks pretty low key and stock. And then underneath the hood, he's got his LS tucked nice and in, nice and cozy in there, ready to upset anybody who is smack talking him. His drivetrain is a seven liter blueprint racing engine, 625 horsepower, LS3, 427 cubic inch. This ain't no junkyard swap. This ain't no Silverado swap. No, no, no. This is the 7 liter LS3427 cubic inch. It has a drive shaft, uh, which is a 1,000 horsepower rated. It's a tick performance stage 2 built T56. Custom engine and trans mounts, of course. He has a Borla mufflers. That's great. He has exhaust cutouts, so it's not obnoxious 24-7. Mission motor radiator and custom fan shroud. BC Racing ER external reservoir coilovers. M3 rear subframe, trailing arms, differentials, 363 gearing, custom crossbar, polyurethane subframe bushings, 135 Brembo brakes and M3 rear brakes, 
Cross and drilled slot rotors. Yeah, I mean, for 27... Oh, here we go. They're Enki wheels. My bad. I said Apex. They look like Apex wheels, but no, they're Enkis with BMW center caps. So I was right about one thing. He has an M3 front bumper, M3 mirrors, 15% tint, hard motorsports, rear flares. Original paint. That's great. That's a that's a solid build right there. That is that another great example of a sleeper. I didn't mean for this episode to be all sleepers, and it definitely isn't from this part out, but... You would not expect a 427 underneath the hood of this little 325 CI. You would you would not expect that. That that's the kind of story where when someone tells you that you say, "Okay, brother. Okay." And then they pop the hood and you immediately ejaculate all over his engine. Like that's that's the kind of story that I I picture when I hear this. I mean, it's a great great swap. I like how he didn't really cheapen out on anything. Um, and it's a great looking car. It's all around like it's a show car. It's a race car. It's 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 great. Good job. Twenty seven thousand dollars. I personally don't know if that's too high for a BMW of this generation with that swap. But let me know down below if you think that's a fair price. Anyways, next car. Yeah, see, no longer a sleeper anymore. It's a it's a weird looking car. Maybe these weren't the wheels for this particular build. Maybe he sold those separately. But this car is a. Uh, well, let's just dive right in. We have a wide body Lexus RCF. I'm not sure if these are not painted or if everything's just kind of wrapped matte. I don't think so. I think these are just not painted. So we have a halfly complete wide body kit. At least that's how it looks in my opinion. I could be wrong. It could be an illusion, but I don't think so. It's a, it's a cool looking car. Kind of got a Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer vibe from that front badge right there. Um, with side skirts have stars on them. Like there's just, there's some questionable stuff going on. But then when you look at the rear, all of your questions might have answers now maybe not maybe you have more questions you have two rear mounted turbos in the rear of this thing that's awesome but then you also have like a cheap tacky sirakawa hanging off like this guy it seems like he had money and he had great ideas but he also doesn't have the best taste because he has a partially complete wide body kit he has dog shit wheels and fitment um he has sirakawas and dog shit side skirts and kind of bad accents on it th on this thing but He's got a rear-mounted twin-turbo kit on it. Like, who the fuck is doing that? That don't make no damn sense. These RCFs sound really good, just as is, without turbos. So I'm really curious how it sounds with turbos. And I do like the rear-mounted setup. Like, it is a kind of good, bougie, fuck you setup. Especially if you're building, like, a show car like this. I, I think it gets down. I think it's really sick. I just think either he ran out of budget, the car got repoed. I don't know. I don't care. Because at least we get a look at it here. It's crazy how Lexuses are kind of slept on when it comes to, like, luxury sports cars. Like, looking at this interior, like, that's a luxurious-looking interior. Those seats, those are some seats from, like, the movie Wally. -E. Those things look luxurious as shit. Lexus, in my opinion, makes some great cars with some great potential. But if you have some weird visions like this, well, it might just end up for sale incomplete. Like, how much does he even want for this thing? 43.9? I don't know if that's fucking crazy high, but that sounds kind of crazy high. 45,000 miles, it's a 2015, 43 nine. So you're paying 44 grand. They're trying to say it delivers 25 highway and 16 city. Not with twin turbos, not really. I wish they would say how much it makes, but of course they're not really gonna say that. Also, how are you gonna have 275s and 255s on a wide body car? That's just dog shit fucking uh, wheel choice right there. I do like the car. I just think, uh, yeah, I, I think it was a running out of budget issue. If you get it for the right price, it's really easy to fix. Wrap the car, remove all of his tacky shit, and get some sort of custom rear valence. Call it a day. This pipe work probably needs to be finished up because that looks like it's dangling way too low. That needs to be tucked up crazy. That that bend is going the wrong way. You need to have that bend going up this way. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, that's some Alibaba shit. Anyways, um, very cool and interesting car. Still thought I'd show you guys, but I mean, there's like panels missing from the engine bay. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Moving on, last car, we have a 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus Coupe two-door, $200,000. So you could buy every single one of these cars probably twice, or you could buy this. Um, let's take a look at it. So it's 2017, he's asking 200 grand. It do have some twin turb skis on the rear. It kind of looks like the Whistle and Diesel TJ Hunt car. I don't know if it actually is. You might say in the description, but I mean, it's it's it looks damn near similar to that shit, so... We'll see. Um, his description said it was built by Sheepy Race, which, uh, in light of modern news, mm, yeah, a kind of questionable build quality. I mean, at least what they're saying online, allegedly some corners might have been cut, allegedly, and I'm just going to say, 
Um, a recent, uh, recent viral posts have seen a few of these break and burn down. So, yeah, might be a good time to try to sell it before uh, shit hits the fan. And this becomes, uh, I don't know, reality for the whole car. It is a clean and beautiful car. I mean, Audi R8s just look aggressive, at least as long as they're not a Gen 1. I really do like them. They're like little luxurious spaceships. They're sick. Voodoo is actually finishing up their twin turbo kit. So as soon as they're finished with that, I'm going to go review and have some fun with it. Um, so hopefully you guys are excited for that. But yeah, let's read his description. Let's see uh, what's going on with this. Originally, this car was built by Sheepy Grace, but it was perfected by Revolution Performance. So good. I know people got a... Uh, you got, you, got, you got someone else to go through the work. <laughs> I know I'll get a lot of messages saying, oh, another sheepy race car for sale. This one has been gone through inspections and has no faults. Genius. Very, very smart. The car is currently producing 1,400 wheel horsepower, and you feel every bit of it. The transmission is a freshly rebuilt with a Dudson Pro Max 9-plate clutch. That sounds expensive. I would love to provide more photos and information, serious uh, buyers, blah, blah, blah. would love to trade for a Huracan, a McLaren, eh? Ferrari rolls, anything, interest, blah, blah, blah. Well, I do have a McLaren, but it makes, it makes half this. It makes half this. So you're probably not interested in that. And uh, it's also a, a little older than this one. But, you know, I mean, uh, if you throw a few hundred thousand on top of it, I might let it go. I might let it go. Um, but yeah, uh, still a very mean looking car, $200,000. I wonder what, why, why would you want to get a Huracan? I guess, I don't know. I mean, like, this is a good looking car. Maybe he just wants to flex a little harder because at the end of the day, it's an Audi R8. It's not as fuck you look at me as a, a Huracan, a McLaren, or a Ferrari. I don't know why Rolls is on here. Get that shit out of here. But anyways, very cool car, nevertheless. I like it, and I'm, I think it's very smart that this guy had someone else go through it. That's a that's a big brain move right there. Good job. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down below which car was your favorite. If I had to choose one, I mean, it'd be pretty hard to pass up on an, RDI, on an Audi R8 V10, but uh, honestly, it would be really cool to get the uh, RCF and go through that bad boy. Probably not. Now, actually, think about it. That seems like a nightmare. Yeah, I'm sticking with the Audi R8. Let me know your favorite down below. Subscribe, and until next video, peace.